Well, good morning, and welcome to this James with Jesus on this Wednesday, August 25th. Um, I'm here at the Botanical Gardens, specifically in the Hosta Garden portion, which is blooming quite nicely right now. And so for anybody that would like to stick around and, and have a brief walk through the, the, the Hosta Garden here, you're welcome to stay for this. I participated in a webinar yesterday from Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service, who's very, very involved with the airlift uh, and resettlement for Afghan refugees, especially those with special immigrant visas or SIV. Um, that category, I think, let's see, so it was for translators, interpreters, um, let's see. translators, interpreters, drivers, engineers who had been assisting uh, the United States military the last 20 years in Afghanistan. And um, I'm sure you'll be able to catch much on the news. Um, these tidbits come specifically with Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service and what they're involved with. They've already helped resettle, I think, uh, over a thousand. Um, and obviously we're talking about tens of thousands that will be, will be coming to the United States. Historically, um, the executive director, Chris Omara Vignaraja, shared that uh, historically SIV um, folks, A, they look for existing communities, so existing Afghan communities here in the United States. And also just with the SIV, a lot of times there's communities in California, Texas, uh, uh, Washington DC area, uh, and Maryland. So those will be the primary spots. But they're also looking for communities of welcome across the country. And so um, you'll hear more about that in the days, weeks, and months to come. So the text I selected was from Leviticus, and this is the 19th chapter. Um, when an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And I found it was interesting, this verse 35 and after. Um, you shall not cheat in measuring length, weight, or quantity. You shall have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and observe them. I am the Lord. So not only do we have this um, understanding of welcome and neighborliness, it's very closely linked with treating one another honestly. And so, um, you know, sometimes people think that religion hovers above society when in, tr in fact it's, it's those who practice faithfully their religions, it should infuse our views on society and the marketplace to say that um, our welcome of neighbors is, you know, a verse away from the one saying, and when you're in the marketplace, use honest weights and measures. So treat each other as you would like to be treated. Um, one of the phrases that really struck with me yesterday from the webinar was the long welcome. And that was reinforced over and over again. Um, you know, you can only imagine, and, and I know a few people in our congregation have actually, well, I know of at least one, um, Aya Seplik, whose family was resettled by Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service uh, in um, around the World War II years. Um, so to be thoroughly uprooted from, from the land you love, the country you love, the homes, friendships, you name it, uh, to move to a foreign country. Uh, so one of the things they spoke about with um, was this thing called ADAPT their model that they use, 1A, you know, an acronym, ADAPT, ACT AS VOLUNTEERS. Well, that's a little harder for us because we don't have the resettlement, at least not just yet here in the upstate. You know, who knows, maybe that will change in the years to come. I know in, in Charlotte, there is a huge uh, resettlement for the Montagnard um, refugees following Vietnam. So, but if you're able to act as a volunteer, in Columbia, there's a refugee house. Um, and so to help set up with furniture, clothing, rides, in, especially in the critical five to seven days when somebody's arrived before they can get um, connected in with, uh, with other services. D is for donate, and that certainly is an area where we can come into play, either directly on Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service website, or if you'd like to make a contribution through 
uh, University Lutheran and just uh, earmark it for Afghan refugee. Uh, we'll make sure that those get to the appropriate place. Second A is for advocacy, and we do a lot of this in the United States. Um, LIRS has been advocating since, I guess, April, May to try to help with this refugee assist assistance, which they saw on the horizon. And now we're at a much more critical state. So uh, reminding our elected leaders um, that what we believe to be true as citizens of this country, that um, we don't turn our backs on friends, especially in times of, uh, of desperate need. So that's well beyond my pay grade. I don't know all the details by a long shot, but my hope is that core value would, would guide and direct us to say, uh, for folks that have been by our side for 20 years, um, let's not, let's do everything possible, humanly possible to, to honor that friendship. P is for prayer, which all of us can be involved with. Uh, T is for teaching resources via Lutheran Immigration Refugee Service, and we'll get more information on that um, as time as time comes. So, again, yesterday was a very interesting um, webinar. The LIRS had done another one 100 days into the Biden administration, looking at refugee situation or asylum seekers uh, coming up through Central uh, Central America and Mexico. Um, I think they speak very boldly the truth when they're pleased with what an administration is doing to help um, further this sense of justice for our, for our neighbors both near and far and times when they feel like administrations uh, are not doing all that we can be doing to help others. So um, if you're interested in participating in these webinars, they're open to anybody. You can just go on the LIRS website, follow them. They'll send you notifications when they're doing them. Um, it's, it's amazing to hear from people. One of the other persons on the call um, actually had fled Afghanistan in 1978, so 43 years ago. And he was just the lamentation in his voice, the pain, because I can discuss these things uh, because I have friend of friends type ties. Um, Lena Jones served for, for a year in Afghanistan. Our daughter was posted there for six months in 2019. Um, but I was not remotely in the thick of it as others have been. And so there's real pain and heartache and uh, sleepless nights going on right now for those who, who know the families, who know the individuals and the difficult situation they're facing. So. Um, with that, let me close with a prayer, and then, um, again, as promised, I'll walk you through the, the, this little portion of the Hosta Garden, so it might be maybe just a couple minutes. So let us pray. Holy God, thank you for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for the gifts of many stewards to make the South Carolina Botanical Gardens a reality, this jewel planted right in our backyard. A reminder of, of just the awesome diversity of your creation. We do pray for everyone who's going through such hard times right now in Afghanistan, those who have been working tirelessly these last um, week or, or more in trying to help with evacuations, the amazing number of people who have been able to be uh, airlifted at this point. We truly look for that day when we are able to resolve our conflicts and our differences peacefully, and yet that seems so beyond our capabilities. So um, continue to embolden and encourage and develop our diplomatic corps, um, workers for peace throughout the world um, that try to help us as one humankind um, share this planet. Be with each of us this day in our neck of the woods that we can do what we are able to do to impact um, relationships around us to further your life-giving message, uh, to be welcoming uh, to all of your children. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, for those who would like to stay with me, I'm going to do it, like I said, a little run around here. This is within the South Carolina Botanical Gardens. This portion is the hosta garden and um, many of the hostas are in bloom. You have varieties that bloom pink, those that are uh, a little bit of a purple to a white. Um, 
sun is just coming up there in the east. They created a um, like a mountainside creek here with a, a bubbling pool. And I'm going to be quiet so you can just listen. So within this South Carolina Botanical Gardens um, are all these separate places dedicated to maybe microclimates. This is in a heavily shaded area, so the hostas do, do really well, uh, moist soil. But if you haven't been over here ever, <laughs> boy, um, this is a place that people will drive to from or visit from all over the country maybe even around the world probably. Uh, and it's right here in our literal backyard. So um, it's right off a of perimeter road by the Clemson campus. Uh, has many, many, many great sites. Uh, like I said, right now, uh, this is particularly a good time to be visiting the Hosta Garden just because there's so much in bloom right now. The Camellia Garden obviously is a is a highlight through the, the winter months and the wildflowers and everything. I was up at the Butterfly Garden before here thinking uh, the children's gardens, the butterfly and, the, and pollinators, thinking that that might be a beautiful spot, um, but they're kind of past their peak. I'm just going to take you to the other side of this bridge and then I'll sign off. But there's that creek that came from the pool down here into the pond where you'll oftentimes see uh, turtles basking in the sun. And then finish with those hostas. So have a blessed day. Bye-bye.